Oh, hey YouTube, how's it going? Today we're going to be talking about lithium batteries. Because who doesn't like flying around with a small, potentially explosive bomb in their pocket? And that's what we're all doing essentially with our cell phones, battery packs, Audis, and anything else you fly with with a battery in it. Today's video is sponsored by Tim's Hats. Beautiful blue soft denim, more traditional bucket hats are available too. Dark blue, very nice. First up, disclaimer, I am not an electrical engineer, I'm not a battery expert, however I have watched a lot of YouTube videos, and I do have experience putting together lithium-ion battery packs, so be warned I'm not an expert, don't believe a word I say. There's two main types of batteries we use in a glider, and that's lead acid batteries and lithium batteries. Now lithium batteries also come in a variety of different chemistries. First up, lead acid, I'm not going to dwell on lead acids much. These are the big heavy ones that all our gliders used to come with in the old days. They're heavy, but they're also reasonably safe to charge and discharge. Lead acid batteries can still be dangerous, especially if you're in a crash or they're short circuited in some way. So you still got to make sure everything's fused as well as you possibly can be. Key thing about lead acid batteries, if you are using them as a glider battery, you should only let them discharge to 50%. Any lower than that, and they tend to damage the battery. So there's a number of different types of lithium chemistries that is very important and makes a big difference as to how safe a particular battery is, how much energy it can contain, and each of them have different qualities or features. For example, what temperature ranges they can cope with. Each of the different types of chemistries come in a number of different formats. So for example, you can get uh, cylindrical cells, which are commonly used in, for example, famously Teslas. Pouch cells are commonly used in cell phones and prismatic cells are often used in larger battery packs, such as for your camper van. When you buy a lithium battery, typically it's put together out of a number of individual cells and put together into a convenient box or pack. Glider batteries, we typically use 9 amp hour and 12 amp hour batteries to power all the avionics. Here's a typical larger lithium battery pack, which shows quite nicely the individual cells, how they're joined together with some bus bars, and you've also got at the end there a battery management system. You want to make sure you get a battery that's got a battery management system in them. So the BMS does a number of things. It will manage the charge of the battery. If the charge gets too high, it will stop charging the battery. If the charge gets too low in the battery, it will cut off discharge of the battery so it can't discharge to a dangerous level. It also balances the cells. So if you've got multiple cells inside your battery, one of them could be a higher voltage than the others and you want to bring them that down and make them all about the same. Usually lithium batteries balance at the top of the battery charge. So when you charge up the whole battery, once it gets above a certain level, it will start drawing down some of the higher cells and making them all balanced. You really want to make sure you don't overcharge lithium cells. And if you do overcharge them, they tend to catch fire. So that's why it's so critical to have a battery management system in your lithium battery pack. And if you've got one cell out of balance and higher than the rest, if you charge the whole pack, that one cell might end up being at a high dangerous voltage level and will explode and catch fire. Do you want to explode and catch fire your battery? No, no we don't. Here's a little battery management system I uh, used on my battery pack I built. You can see it's got a balancing board on the left there. There's a brains, a little computer that manages everything else on the right there. And then it's got a display which shows you what each individual cell voltage is and the whole battery pack as a whole, what voltage it is. First up, we've got standard lithium ion batteries, like what you'd find in your cell phone or your e-bike or your electric car, some sort of chemistry like lithium nickel manganese cobalt oxide. Catchy. These things are very high energy density, but they come with a price, and that is they are more flammable and more prone to explosions if they are mishandled or overcharged. They're also used in Fez gliders, the front electric sustainer. These are the big battery packs that are installed in the rear of the glider, and they provide a huge amount of power for a sm the smallest space possible, which is why they're using these particular types of cells. Lithium ion phosphate is another popular chemistry, and this is what we use when a glider manufacturer ships a glider with lithium batteries installed in the glider, they are using lithium ion phosphate. 
Lithium iron phosphate doesn't have as high energy density, but they're safer. They also have slightly longer lifespan, so for a glider battery that's a good thing. So let's compare costs. These aren't great examples. I tried to find the same size cells and packs uh, with battery management systems in them. Lithium iron phosphate, you can see uh, that particular model there is about 170 New Zealand dollars. That's about 2,000 cycles you'll get out of it, plus, depending how well it's looked after. And the key thing is you can use 90% or more of lithium ion phosphate batteries. You're not limited to the 50% that you are with lead acid. So the weight, they're a bit heavier than the standard lithium ion cells that you'd use in your phone or uh, a model aircraft. This particular pack is a model aircraft pack and you can see it's about the same price as lithium ion phosphate but half the weight. So when you look at all these factors and you're trying to figure out is it worth spending the money on a lithium ion phosphate glider battery, the answer is pretty much yes. You get much better performance, you get way longer lifespan of the battery and you can use much more percentage of the battery. So let's say you've bought some uh, lithium ion phosphate batteries for your glider or it came with some. How do you look after them? And this applies to both lithium ion phosphate and standard lithium. You want to keep them cool. Don't let them get too hot. Ideally, you operate them between 30 and 80%. You want to avoid fast charging and fast discharging. And generally, if you're just using it in a glider, that won't be a fast discharge at all. Storage. You don't want to store them for long times at fully charged state or at zero. Both of those can damage the battery. Ideally, for regular use, don't charge it straight after a flight and have it ready sitting at 100% until your next flight, which might be days or weeks away. It's far better to take it home with you, charge it the night before or the morning of the flight to 100% and then use it. Finally, don't charge when below freezing, so zero degrees centigrade, ideally five degrees centigrade or higher. So how to look after lead acid? Keep above 50%, don't drain them more than that. They like a long, fully saturating charge, whereas lithium batteries can be charged and discharged any time you want. Lead acid, leave them charging. Use a good charger that's designed to look prolong the life of the lead acid battery. And you want to avoid charging in really hot temperatures. Storage, they do drain themselves if left sitting, so you need to give them a topping up charge every six months at the least. So, battery fires. Who wants them? No one. So how do you mitigate the risk of your lithium batteries catching fire? So this is particularly relevant to USB battery packs, cell phones, Audis, PDAs, tablets, anything like that with a lithium battery in it. First of all, don't overheat your device. Now this is very easy to do, especially if you leave them in the sun on a hot day, under the canopy. Don't drop your lithium batteries. They are prone to shock damage and they're reasonably delicate. They've got two, an anode and a cathode inside the battery. If they're damaged, punctured, the cathode touches the anode, that can cause a short circuit inside the battery and cause a fire. A lot of lithium battery pouch cells in particular are designed to swell up before they explode. And so if you've got a battery pack or a battery that looks like it's got bigger and swelled, you wanna make sure you don't use it your phone can also do the same thing if your phone is swelled. Thanks Abby for the beautiful video of your swelled phone. Don't use it and don't charge it. Sometimes it'll be a lot more subtle, just slightly bulging case. Obviously don't overcharge your devices. They have battery management systems built into these devices, but if that fails for any reason and you leave the charger plugged in for a long extended period of time, you could have an exploding battery. Make sure you use the correct charger for your battery cells. So make sure it's for the right chemistry. If you're using lithium ion phosphate, make sure you select lithium ion phosphate charger. So this little video is comparing how lithium ion phosphate and lithium ion battery packs swell and explode when short-circuited. And you can see how violent the explosions can be for lithium-ion battery packs versus lithium-ion phosphate. So, 
all your devices in the cockpit you need to be very careful about leaving them sitting around in the sun don't let them get too hot again don't leave them charging for long periods and if you're not going to use the device for a while don't leave it at 100 percent discharge it to 60 percent 50 percent somewhere around the middle if you can DJI actually have their drones draining to 50% automatically if you haven't used them in a few days. So what are the chances of one of our Audis or your phone actually catching fire inside the cockpit? Well here's an example of one we had at our airfield where the device was used all day for a flight. At the end of the flight it was put into its case which is a black case which was then put into a black bag and stuck outside in the sun at about five o'clock in the evening for about 10 minutes and this thing actually started smoking inside the bag so the owner managed to chuck it out of the bag and left it sitting on the airfield let it smoke and flame away and this is the aftermath now we don't know what happened to this particular device maybe it was damaged at some point maybe it just got too hot we don't really know i'd say one of our biggest risks is usb battery packs like this one i've got here they come in a variety of sizes and shapes. Normally these thicker ones are using the round cells inside them. The thin flat ones will be using pouch cells. They all have risk of fire if they're dropped, damaged or abused or get too hot. These are all lithium ion, not lithium ion phosphate because they're very small. They've got that high energy density. Generally I would recommend people do not use these in their gliders. That is a huge amount of energy stored in a very small space if that goes off it's going to be a big problem far safer would be to install a proper usb port inside your glider and use that instead to power your phone or whatever you're running in the cockpit make sure you talk to your glider engineer about how to install a usb port in your glider so what about fez gliders and other electric self-launching gliders or sustainer gliders Sadly, here in New Zealand, we've had one fatal accident with a Pipstraw self-launching electric glider. This has got a propeller that extends from uh, the fuselage and big lithium battery packs. The accident report for this wasn't 100% conclusive as to why the batteries caught fire, but it is possible that they were stored at 100% for a long period of time while the owner was overseas which is directly against what the instructions in the manual says for that battery pack. It's also possible they were damaged in a heavy landing incident. My advice, if you've got a big electric battery pack behind you in the glider, especially if it's lithium ion, and you see any smoke in the cockpit, you need to get out immediately. Sadly, this Pipstrel glider had a ballistic parachute on the fuselage, but the pilot did not have a parachute, so he was not able to jump out. There have been other gliders catch fire, with uh, particularly the Fez system. A few of them have caught fire. Uh, this particular one managed to land, and it caught fire during or after the landing. And uh, there's an exhaustive report, which I'll link to in the description below, that uh, gives full details about uh, how that probably started. So. What do you do if your portable electronics, like your phone or your battery pack, catch fire in the cockpit? Well, you don't have a lot of choices. First of all, don't muck around. Chances are it'll swell up and start smoking. Get it out of the cockpit as fast as you can. Throw it out the window. If you can't throw it out the window, it won't fit out the window, for example, with a tablet, then probably ejecting your canopy and throwing it overboard is the best option. Open your air vents because the smoke is toxic. Hopefully there'll be enough air coming in from the front that you won't be breathing it in. If one of these actually combusts and catches fire, your only real option is to get out and bail out. And uh, I don't know what else you could do really. The, um, the intensity of these fires is immense, thousands of degrees Celsius. So there's no way you could handle it without burning yourself severely, obviously. If you can get it out, that's great. So the fun part about lithium battery fires is you can't actually stop them easily. The problem is inside the battery cells is everything that is needed to keep the fire going. 
So smothering it and cutting out oxygen won't help because there's already everything it needs inside the battery. The best thing you can do, if you've got a lot of water, you can continuously hose it down with water to try and lower the temperatures to stop the fire spreading to other nearby battery cells or anything else. Alternatively, just let it burn out and eventually it will stop. But it does take some time. And unfortunately, if you've got a battery pack with lots of cells in it, it'll burn one. The heat from that will then cause the cells next to it to, to combust and start thermal runaway and you'll get a chain reaction throughout the whole pack. Well, thanks for watching YouTube. Hopefully this will give you some pause for thought when you're dealing with your lithium batteries in the cockpit. Just look after them. Don't use dropped, broken, damaged batteries. Make sure you're careful with them. Don't let them get too hot. And chances are everything will be fine.